Welcome to the Dartmouth Memorial Skating Rink here in New Bedford, DC TV Sports. Dartmouth Community Media is proud to present Dartmouth High School Hockey. Today it is the Battle Royale. Yes, it is the rivalry between the Dartmouth Indians and the Bishop Staying Spartans. Paul Santos joined alongside by Chris Santos. And Chris, it is always very exciting every year. It always comes down to the last poll. Everybody really wants to win. The parents want to win. The kids want to win. But this year, both teams are undefeated. I don't know. That just makes it more fun. Yeah, 3-0 and versus 4-0, and Paul. And both coaches thinking this is the game that gets our season started. Thinking that what they've won so far has been okay, but it hasn't been the challenges that they're really looking for. This is the one that jump starts the season. It should be a good one. We just had a great one. Foxborough beat old Rochester 5-4. So the winner of this one takes on the Warriors in the championship of the holiday tournament. See Coach Kenny Gover of Bishop Stang, nine years behind the bench on the left. You have Paul Versells and Frank Gomes over there. And on the other side, it is Mike Capello. And it is also Brian Rose and Derek Martin. A lot of knowledge behind the bench. And Seamus Martin takes over for Stang as we are underway. Puck is out in the right wing, backhand. It stopped at the point. Throw down deep by Dartmouth. This is J.C. Freights, one of the snipers for the Indians. Out in front and misses the net. Follow up here by Damon, Damian Medeiros. And the puck is out. Good chance for Dartmouth there. Yeah, they put the pressure on early in these first 30 seconds. I think the key to this one too, Paul, let's don't forget about the goalies. Bennett for Stang and Machado, just a sophomore for Dartmouth. All right, Bennett is a big kid and Machado pretty small, but we saw Machado last year. He's small, but he's very fast. And he played a very nice down the stretch for the Indians. Reed Martin tries to throw it out in front, gets it to center right, it's a breakaway. Damian Medeiros in alone on Bennett. Medeiros, saved by Bennett. Oh, what a stop. Well, the biggest one so far, and obviously we are just a minute underway, and nothing bigger than the breakaway. Oh, plenty of time for Bennett to move in. Medeiros to move in on Bennett. And Bennett made the stop. All right, here's Stang, keeping it in. Puck goes behind the net. Picked up here by Aiden Cousineau. Puck goes up on the wing, played back. And now it's Luke Caniff. Reed Martin around the horn, stopped at the point. Stang tries to play it down deep. Reed Martin flips it out to center ice and gets the puck away from the front of his net. Ah, collision out there at center ice. First big hit of the game. Looks like it's delivered by Eli Akella. Now behind the net, Bishop Stang looking to move it out front. The Indians trying to keep Stang on the perimeter. Here's a shot through a screen. Goes wide of the net as the defenseman Nelson was there trying to get control. And Josh Nelson passes it out to center ice. Some good, good pressure there by Stang, Chris. Yeah, and some more physicality from the Spartans now after the first two minutes, Paul. Trying to see if Dartmouth can handle that. Nate Maniz behind the net, moves it up on the wing. Something different this year, never happened before. Brothers, one on Stang and one on Dartmouth playing the game. It's Nate Maniz on Stang and Evan Maniz on Dartmouth. Very, very interesting as Nelson. Nelson makes a nice play, throws it at the net, and it goes wide. So if you're the parents, what are you thinking out there in the stands? Well, <laughs> maybe you're wearing half green and half red. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. Nelson with a long pass, wrist shot, wide of Bennett. Long rebound, puck is slid down there by the Indians, Reed Martin. Man knocked down, looks like we had a penalty coming up. It looks like one of the staying captains went down. Jack Jedry was knocked down by Dartmouth and we have a penalty against the Indians. Yeah, and one of the things we've noticed early, Paul, you watch that offside winger taking off and getting behind the defense of Sting. So whether Sting's changing or not, they gotta be alert to that open man down there. That's three times already in the first three minutes that they've had some open chances. J.C. Freights, one of the snipers on Dartmouth, is in the penalty box for tripping and a great chance for staying out in front. Puck bounces around. You know, and talk to Coach Govea. Here's a shot. Save, Lee Rene, score! Jack Jedry puts in the rebound. It's 1 0 Bishop Stang. 12 yeah. 11 to go. And the big part here for Jedry, it's the body position in front, Paul. He stuck. Stood his ground and he did it really well from the defender and he was able with his left hand just to put it home and finish it off the first save that Machado had made. But the body position was the big thing and that's why he put it home. 12-11 to go here in the first period and Bishop staying on the board quickly. 
I guess the last few years, I haven't really seen anybody score really quick like that, like three minutes into the game. Wow, that, that really gives the team a lift. Well, penalties are a killer. Doesn't matter what sport it is, and that's a big one because it's a power play goal, and it was set up nicely in the umbrella format by Ken Gorvea to get his team where he wanted to. They get on the board first. Well, when we talked to the coaches before the game, Coach Capella was worried about the Bishop staying power play, and I guess he was right because mm -hmm. Stang gets a power play goal. It's not the game and a big collision out there just outside the blue line. There's Stang. There's a pass across. Goes wide of the net by Jack Jedry. Now the puck comes around. Collected here by Aiden Cousineau. Can't get it out. Chance here for Stang, and it is finally slid out by Josh Nelson. Yeah, I'm surprised that wasn't called before as an interference, Paul, because he didn't play the puck. He played the man, and he chipped it off the boards, and then he hit the guy. That's usually interference. Wasn't called. So we get 12, excuse me, 11.31 to go in the first period. Bishop Stang leading one to nothing on the rebound. Looked like Aiden Machado did a pretty good job making that first save, but that second rebound, the rebound was just right there for the taking. Yeah, kicked it out in front, and unfortunately, good position by Jed Reen. Just finished it. Cullen Larrabee takes the draw for the Indians. Puck is flipped down into the corner by Luke Caniff. Oh, he just knocks the man down. That was Cullen Larrabee. Knocks down Seamus Marshall. And now the physicality picks up. Mm -hmm. Wing to wing it goes. Stopped here by Stang. That's center ice. Kept in by the Indians. Behind the net it goes. Adding Cousineau. Cousineau puts it in front of the net. It's loose in the slot. And it's covered up by Bennett. Yeah, ball, uh, puck came off the wall. And Bennett in front did not control it at first. And then a lot of Dotman sticks got in. But yes, Paul, the physicality has picked up. These two teams know each other real well. They play sometimes together uh, outside of school in other leagues. But now they're facing one another. And it's just going to get that kind of way. So expect it for the rest of the night. Indians put their top line out there. Face off taken by Aiden Cruz. Kept in here by Josh Nelson. Cruz down deep. Damian Medeiros with it on the circle. Trying to get control of it. Damian spins. Taken away by Stang. And the puck is cleared out, but not all the way out. Now it's out to center ice. Collected here now by Freights. J.C. Freights down deep. Tries to throw it across. Defended nicely by Bishop Stang. Defense Aiden Kazanu. Puck goes high in the air. Josh Nelson moves it out. Looks like it was a hand pass. And we have a face-off coming up. Yeah, he'll come out of the zone, and that's the line that can generate some things. We saw Medeiros with the breakaway earlier, had a nice little fake with the shot, got Bennett to go down, went to the backhand. But as you said, Paul, Bennett's a big kid, covers a lot of that net, and Medeiros just couldn't get it by him. But that was their best chance so far here in the first. They need to pick up the intensity. Bishop Stang now getting an offensive zone face-off. Jack Jedry taking the draw. Jedry controls, has a shot through, blocked in front nicely there by Reed Martin. And Reed Martin breaks out. Martin goes deep into the corner. Martin throws it out in front, bouncing puck in the slot. The Indians couldn't get control of it. Yeah, that was dangerous from the sting point of view. Yeah, but Martin with a nice play, got it out wide, and just a little saucer pass right in front. Let the Indians see what they can do as they get called for offsides on that one. So we are off and running here at Hedlund Arena. Stang and Dartmouth, both teams undefeated. And staying scoring a goal less than three minutes into the game, a power play goal. And that really got the Stang fans up and cheering because a power play goal that early in the game, sometimes you look back at that later on, and that, that's huge. Oh, it sure is. I mean, it just starts everything for you, and you want to get your power play going, knowing that, hey, uh, you know, we've done it so far, that's why we're undefeated. Let's keep that going. Josh Nelson spins, tried to bank it up through center ice. It went out of play onto the Dartmouth bench. And we have a draw coming up. Your thoughts so far? I think, I don't know, I think Stang may be carrying the play just a little bit. I, I think it's been equal so far besides the power play, obviously dictated um, by, by Stang. But besides that, uh, I think it's been kind of equal. Uh, both guys have had to do their work in, the, in goal. And, um, you know, good chances from both sides. Noah Grigson and Cullen Larrabee take the draw here at the circle. Back to the point. Stang with a blast through a screen. Blocked in front that time by Kai Andrade. They tried to get it through a screen from the point, see if they could catch Machado, not seeing the puck coming through. They're battling right down in front of us. Belson plays it up, Kai Andrade. Wing to wing it goes. Picks up Charlie Camisa. Drops the pass. Indians try to keep it in. They play it down to the right wing corner. Bodies battling, trying to get control of the puck. Darman throws it out in front, and it got deflected. Now Josh Nelson plays it down deep. The Indians carrying the play now for this 
30 second time period here, but now Bishop Stain controls. They controlled down there, but I don't really think they tested Bennett. No, it hasn't been anything serious besides the Medeiros one in the early in the first. Off the oh, no, that one hit the post. That was Colin Larrabee. It was the outside of the post, and he just nicked it. But he still caught some iron from the slot. Sure did. And what you like about that is he had a nice screen by the defense. Gave Bennett a little late on the glove. <laughs> it did ricochet. We had a great view of that one, Paul. There's Coach Brian Rose. Usually runs the forward lines for Coach Capello. 22 years at the helm here at Dartmouth High School. Face off now to the right or to the left of the stain goalie. Moose puck slides all the way down here on Machado. And it's going to be icing. We'll do it over again. 9.08 to go in the first. Well, we'll see what happens now. Let's see who takes the bull by the horn, so to speak. Very evenly matched teams, according to both coaches. First line's back on for both. Trying to control off the faceoff. Played out here by Quinn Pine. Slides all the way down. Damian Medeiros goes down into the corner. Aiden Cruz for Dartmouth. Cruz looking to dig it out. They throw it out in front of the net. Stopped here by Matt Burt. Who's puck in front of the net? Indians with a shot through. Save. Rebound. Oh, it didn't go in. Look at Reed Martin, number 39. He got a shot from point blank range. Yeah, he did. And Freights looked to chip it home, and he went right across the goal crease, and it went to the other side. Here they come again. Reed Martin with a shot. Save by Bennett. Rebound. This time the puck goes out to center ice. The Indians turning up the heat. There's no contact there. That's going to be icing on the pass from Josh Nelson to Damian Medeiros. Oh, yeah, the uh, action is picking up a little bit. Yeah, it sure has. And there's a great opportunity again from Reed Martin. Had a nice low shot stick side as we see Ken Govea talking with his team to get them back on track because Dartmouth has carried the play for the last couple of minutes. Aiden Kazan, who takes the draw here for Bishop Stang. Josh Nelson hurls it around. Collision there, Kai Andrade gets the puck down into the offensive end. And it's out to center ice again. Aiden Cousineau, wing to wing pass. Here is Nelson. Gets bumped, slides it down, Kai Andrade too far ahead. Stang can't get it out of the zone, it bounces near the net. And Bishop Stang picks it up. Here's Devin Beck, can't get the puck out. Down goes Nelson at the point. Indians really fighting hard to keep the puck in. There's a wrist shot through a screen, blocked in front. Indians getting shots through a screen, not usually do that. That was Cullen Larrabee. Figured he'd take a shot through all that traffic, and somehow it went through. There's a shot from point blank range. That one's deflected wide. It looked like Nate Maniz. Oh, that's going to be called for penalty there. Yeah, there's a penalty. Could get a retaliation, too, by Sting. Yep, absolutely. Let's see if they're going to go with both or just one. I think they're only going to go with just one. It's going to get called from the hit from behind. Interference looks like it's going to be the call. So two penalties for Dartmouth so far, none for Bishop Stang. Simmons wasn't happy about it from Stang as Kamisa hits the box. Let's see if they capitalize again, Paul, on their second power play of the night. Jack Jedry tries to get it near the net. Justin Govea pursuing the puck. Govea goes into the corner, tries to dig it out. Now it goes on the side of the net, thrown around by Justin Govea. Big hit along the near boards. And a helmet came yeah. off, and now we may have another penalty as the Dartmouth Indian player has lost his helmet. That's Josh Nelson, number six. Yeah, but I don't know if they're calling a penalty or just saying that the helmet came off. Right. Maybe they're just stopping play for safety. Well, well that, that definitely is what the call is, but... <laughs> Is there a reason why that helmet came off? So he'll adjust it back on Nelson, who's played a good first period. And they're trying to figure out if there's going to be a call, and Brian Rose is asking. They're saying, no, it's not. 147 to go on the Dartmouth penalty. So it looks like right now they're just going to continue to play and have a faceoff here to the right of Machado, the goaltender. So Cruz and Larrabee will be up front with Martin and Nelson in the back for Dartmouth. There's a blast very wide of the net. Justin Govere on the far boards. Govere plays it back to the point. There's a pass across. Saved by Machado. Oh, they set it up. Beautiful shot that time by Quinn Pine. 
Yeah, and that's, that's just over getting out of the box for Dartmouth, and they got away with that one because that's a good backdoor pass, and he had a good shot. Bishop saying likes doing that. They did that to the Indians last year. They like that wing-to-wing -wing pass. Get the goalie moving, a loose puck in front of Machado. You can get Machado moving and open up the wickets as he tries to come across. Yeah, so and blast Dartmouth's got to stay in the box. They can't be running around. Force thing to make great passes. Not easy ones. JC Freights can't get it out. He's a blast through. Blocked in front. And it's cleared out by the Dartmouth Indians. And that is Pine. Good job by Bennett of bringing it up and getting it right back out quickly as they come right back the other way. There's a save by Machado. He came out to the top of the crease. There's another blast blocked in front by Nelson. And Nelson clears it down. He's going to chase Seamus down there. Seamus Marshall, but Marshall gets the puck. Yeah, Tyler Beck with a blast. And a good save by Machado. 34 seconds left on the power play. That shot is deflected wide by Reed Martin. It goes all the way around. Damian Medeiros manages to flip it past Jack Jedry, and it's out of the Dartmouth zone. Yeah, about 23 seconds left in this power play for Stang. Like is that center ice. Indians thinking about maybe a short-handed opportunity. Now Stang moving into the offensive end. Nice job that time as the puck is broken up by Luke Caniff. Caniff goes into the corner. Big contact with Adam Simmons. Puck comes around, Simmons lays it out in front. Damian Medeiros just kind of standing. And now Nelson still can't get it out. Penalty's over, shot saved by Machado. A high one up on the shoulder. The penalty is over. The Indians got to get the puck out, and finally they do. Nice action there by Stang. All right, 5.15 to go. The Indians dodge a bullet there, and here they come. Out through center ice, Damian Medeiros slides it in. Bouncing puck. And back comes Bishop Stang. Oh, a big hit that time by Nelson. Nice, clean hit on number 14, adding Cousineau. Now the Indians move it out. Now through the neutral zone. Under five minutes to go in the first period. Nice move there by the Indians. That was Maddox Carrero, only a sophomore. Now Josh Nelson, he's pinching. He goes down deep. Nelson goes around the net, puts it out in front. And it looks like a stick got lifted. Now a follow-up chance. It looks like a wraparound. Nope, going to the top of the circle. Wrist shot through by Reed Martin, and that's blocked in front. Too much traffic out there in front. Josh Nelson keeps it in. And now Bishop Stang. No, they can't get it out. Reed Martin with a blast through his screen. Now Stang needs a change. They're tired out there right now. Evan Meniz is down there for Dartmouth High School, trying to keep it going. Taking the hit that time was the Dartmouth Indians. That was Aiden Cruz. And that was a hit there by Reed Martin. Reed Martin delivers the hit. Noah Grigson didn't like it. 4-10 to go. Noah Grigson for Bishop Stang. Plays it around. Oh, it's collected here by James Sharrier. Sharrier now to, well, it looks like Aiden Cruz. Aiden Cruz is knocked down by Seamus Marshall. And Marshall comes back with the puck. Letting him play right now, the officials. Oh, oh and they get a trip. Summerstall. And it's a penalty coming up against number four. And that is Jack Jedry as the Dartmouth Indian player went head over heels. Actually, it's going to be on number 21. Oh, okay. Aiden Cruz, I believe, is going to get the call. Yep, freshman forward. Wow. Yep. Now, Paul, what did you notice from the first power play to the second power play from Stang? I well, thought Stang did a lot off the transition, but yes. they never got the puck in, and they never set the umbrella up. Remember, it's five on four. Dump it in, get the puck. Use the man advantage. Set yourself up like they're doing now. Puck backhanded down. Jack Jedry goes behind that. Plays it across. A one, oh, I thought it was going to be a one-timer. Quinn Pine plays it around. And it's skated out here by J.C. Freights. Yeah, on the second one, they never did anything like that. They were more of getting the transition, coming down, taking shots. Then it was cleared out of the zone. I always like to dump it in. I got an extra man. Get two men on the puck. Set up your power play. Minute and a half left, there's Machado, great save, the rebound came out, Gotta get it squirts out, oh. another shot, it's oh. blocked, Machado diving in front. Baby Medeiros is in the net, Reed Martin is in the net. Oh, bodies flying everywhere, and the puck does not go in. Uh, three looks for Bishop Stang right there. Machado with the first save, rebound comes out, kicks the next one, then the puck deflected like a pinball ball. That chance is they just couldn't finish it. Machado making that first save, it was the second one where he kind of kicked it out, then it trickled across, and then he got help from Damian Medeiros, and oh my gosh, that, <laughs> that was a heavy action right there. That was very entertaining. 3.09 to go in the first period, 1.22 on the power play. 
Staying has it at the point. As Marshall. Marshall plays it down low. Josh Nelson trying to stop that one time shot. Across it goes to the slot. Saved by Marshall. Oh, point blank range. The shot was taken. Tyler Beck. And Machado robbed him. We're going to get a penalty, though. And this one's going to go against Stang. Jack Jedry is on the way to the penalty box. Yep. So that's there for us. So at 2.51, about a minute different. So it will be four on four for a minute, Paul, and then Dartmouth will have the man advantage. But that's what Stang does well when they set up uh, in their umbrella around on the offensive zone. They're able to move it around, and they've gotten good quality chances. Aiden Simmons taking the draw, goes behind the net. Says Bennett plays it around. One minute left on the power play. Seamus Marshall plays it around to the other side. Here comes Aiden Simmons. Long pass to the neutral zone. All the way down it goes. Tyler Beck being chased by Josh Nelson. Beck plays it around. J.C. Freights can't get it. Stopped here by Stang. Play it down deep. Aiden Simmons can't get it. Dartmouth plays it around. Here's Reed Martin. Martin plays it back around. Here's Josh Nelson. Nelson flips it across. And here's Damian Medeiros. Short-handed opportunity. 30 seconds left on the power play. Medeiros tries to go right down the middle. It's bumped off the puck by the Stang defense. 20 seconds left. You can do that, but you got to do it a little bit quicker if you're Medeiros. You can't go that slow through the middle. There's too many bodies that come across. Damian Medeiros trying to move to the high slot. It's broken up by Seamus Marshall. That was Justin Govier that broke that up for Bishop Stang. Okay, now 1.45 to go. 55 seconds now on the Dartmouth power play. Stang is trying to kill a lot of time. And they blast the puck out down to the Dartmouth end. 45 seconds left on the Dartmouth power play. J.C. Freights has it now. Minute and a half left in the period. And quite a period. Entertaining hockey, that's for sure. Yeah, it sure has been. That goes down. A chance here for Dartmouth. There's a shot. Save that time by Bennett. Braden Bennett makes the stop. Yeah, Justin that would be what a good shot. Now another chance. Backhander through. That goes wide of the net. They'll try to hack it out. That was Quinn Pine, and the puck is cleared out by Bishop Stang. And there is one minute left in the first period. one nothing Bishop Stang. Long pass. Kai Andred. Collects it in the offensive end. In front. Try to get it to Nate Moniz. Excuse me, to Cullen Larrabee. Hopped over a stick. And it is now Dartmouth Indians. 48 seconds left in the period. Cullen Larrabee couldn't control it. Back comes Reed Martin. Yeah, Reed Martin gets hit. Wow, he got hit that time. It's collected here by Stang. There's a great save by Machado. Tyler Beck picked up the loose puck and fired it on Machado, and Machado makes the save. Emma Beck was the one that got the hit on Martin, came out, grabbed the puck, turned around, spin shot, but a good save by Machado, as you said. Came out and cut down the angle. 35 seconds to go here in the first. Batman's got to weather the storm right here. Too many men on the ice right now. Yes, it seems like... And six guys on the ice. It seems like the Indians need to get into the locker room and regroup. Aiden Cruz on the draw. Puck is in the high slot. Aiden Cruz gets it. And out he goes to center ice. Picking up Damian Medeiros. Cruz going into the corner. Gets knocked down. Damian Medeiros tries to play it back to the high slot. Bouncing puck. Loose. And pass. And pass, 17 seconds left. Now the Indians trying to do some one-on-one -on -one there. And the Indians unable to get through to get a good shot on Bennett. Now when I was coaching Paul, we always talked about the first two minutes of the period and the last two minutes. You're going to get to that hot start. You want to weather the storm, the excitement, the intensity. And at the end, obviously, you're wearing down during the period. You want to make sure you give up nothing in those last two as well. Aiden Cruz on the jar against Jack Dedry. 17 seconds left. Aiden Cruz gets it out to center ice, but couldn't get Damian Medeiros breaking down the right wing. Eight seconds left. There's Bishop, Sh Bishop Stang. Pass ahead. Collected here by Quinn Pine. Stopped here by the Indians. One second left. Aiden Cruz has the puck, and that's going to do it in the first period. The only goal was scored by Bishop Stang with 12-11 to go in the first period, but... 
It felt to me like Bishop Stang had the advantage, not because of the score, but, you know, the way the game was being played. Well, very entertaining first period, number one. Physicality obviously started by Stang and then got more chances on the power play than Dartmouth. They took advantage of one that they really needed. The first one had good opportunities again. Uh, definitely in the third one, couldn't get it in. But they lead one nothing. Now it's, hey, let's go in. Let's talk about a little bit of second period adjustments, see what we want to do, and come out, uh, obviously, ready and refreshed for period number two. Look like Jack Gendry put in the rebound from our vantage point, but we'll double check that. Bishop Lane start is leading the Dartmouth Indians one nothing at the end of one. The goal scored with 12 minutes and 11 seconds left in the period. All right, we'll be back for a second period action from the Headland Memorial Skating Rink. In a moment, you are watching Dartmouth Stang Hockey right here on Dartmouth Community Media. Stang getting that early lead and Really kept up the pressure after that. That first goal really lifted him, I thought. Yeah, it sure did. And, you know, penalties are killers, obviously, in hockey. And you got to stay out of the box. And right now, it favors Bishop Stang as they've uh, had three power plays. Dartmouth has only had one. And we talk about it in football all the time, Paul, where it really bites you and comes back and hurts you. And this one did for, obviously, Dartmouth. But a good job by setting it up from Stang. They got Jedry in front, he got the body position, Machado made the first save, but he was there to finish it and take it home. They got the early lead. After that, I thought the physicality really picked up uh, in the middle part of that game, and it's carried on ever since. So we'll see how that really develops as this goes on. But I'm looking to see what team has really made some adjustments, and we'll see what that is here in the second period. So it looks like Coach Govea is on the bench. He's chatting with his assistant coaches. There's Ryan Govea. And, of course, there's Mike Capello and Ryan Rose. So we are underway here in the second period. This is going to be a lot of fun like it usually is as we get closer and closer to the third period. Here's our collision right there, Damian Medeiros, banging into Matt Burt. <laughs> that was about two seconds into the that period, Chris. take long. <laughs> here we go again. Into the corner it goes. The Indians dig it out and try to move it out of the zone. Stang is putting on the pressure. Oh, he misses him that time. He really wanted to deliver the hit. Now it's J.C. Freights playing it around. Up on the wing, Damian Medeiros. Nice little move to get the puck away from Jack Jedry. And he slides it down to Seamus Marshall. Seamus Marshall, long pass ahead. Picked off right there by Luke Caniff. Puck is at center ice. Into the offensive end. Here comes Aiden Cruz. That was collected by Damian Medeiros. Damian with a shot. Oh, that's deflected wide. It hit the stick of Nate Moniz. Puck is out the center ice. The, the stick changed the direction right there. Puck is now on the Dartmouth end. Out come the Indians. They slide it down behind goaltender Braden Bennett. He leaves it for Marshall. Marshall moves it up on the wing. Collected by the Indians. They throw it across. And Kai Andrade couldn't make the redirect. And now it's taken away. Here's a great chance right here for Aiden Simmons. Aiden Simmons goes down behind the net. Kai Andre rams into him. Oh, Chris is talking about physicality. Take a look at this at the beginning of the second period. Yeah, and it's really going hard. But remember, too, Paul, you have to control your emotions in games like this because you don't want to get a cheap physical penalty and put you in the box. Aiden Simmons behind the net. Puck is loose on the high slot, kept in by the Spartans. Down the right wing corner goes Aiden Cousineau. Cousineau picking up some speed behind the net. Cousineau plays it back to the point. Gets his pass back. Goes to the circle. Throws it out in front. Rich shot through. High and wide of the net by Nate Moniz. Nate Moniz is that player that his brother plays on Dartmouth. The two brothers playing against each other today. And that's the first time, according to Paul Brussels, that that's happened. That you had two brothers playing against each other. Kind of surprised in a way. Yeah. Well, the old adage is 99% of the pucks will never go in if it never goes on net. So, <laughs> you know, get it toward the goalie. Good things can happen. Here come the Spartans. They chip it down. And it is going to be icing against the Dartmouth Indians. 12.45 to go in the second. Staying leading 1-0 on the Jack Jedry power play goal. Your thoughts? Well, you figured this would be what the second period is going to start off as. The physicality, the speed of the game continuing to pick up. And it's a matter of winning the loose puck battles, Paul. If you can get that and then get turn it into trans uh, transition 
uh, hockey, you might be able to sneak one in. Noah Grigson won the draw. Goes down into the right wing corner. The Indians, Luke Caniff, plays it around. Swings it back into the corner. Dartmouth Indian player goes down, and now it is chipped out to center ice. Now Bishop staying, battling back to get the puck. Wow, pretty good forecheck there by Evan Meniz as he put the pressure on. Martin throws it in front. Intercepted. Now on the near side, that's the Indians. They throw it in front. Intercepted. That was Maddox Carrero. At the left point, Dartmouth keeps it in. Takes the hit. Puck's still loose, and finally cleared out by Stang. Some Perfect. chances there by Darwin. Perfect example right there. You, you win the loose puck battles, turns into scoring opportunities. Three times the Indians had chances. Luke Cannon for Darwin slides it down. Damien Medeiros looking to connect up with Aiden Cruz. There's a backhander. It bounces in front as Reed Martin put the puck in front. And now the Indians at Luke Caniff. Plays it across. The Indians move it out to center ice. Damian Medeiros into the offensive end. He's outnumbered. Goes for the shot. Saved that time by Braden Bennett, but he does get the offensive zone face off. So Martin taking off from his defensive position, moving up, dropping freights back. So that's got Dartmouth moving a little bit more. Trying to slide it over to Medeiros. It got deflected, unfortunately, and it went up high. Whistle blows. It will stay to the right of Bennett. Face off now to the right of Bennett. Cullen Larrabee taking the draw for the Indians against Jack Jidry. A battle for the possession of the puck. And Bishop Stang clears it out. Puck goes off the stick of Justin Govea. Collected here by the Indians. From the wing, shot, save, and the puck broke off. Goaltender Braden Bennett. That's a name we have not called too often in that first period is Justin Govea. You know, you figure him first line, left winger, get him going. Let's see if they can get him started in the second period. Yeah, he's had a great year so far. Looks like Jack Jedry with four goals. Quinn Pine has had five goals and Justin Gauvet with seven. But they all have assists on each other's goals. That's the first line right there. If they can get going. Yeah, we haven't called Gauvet's name yet. So let's like, like see if uh, the captain can turn his game up here in the second period. Jack Jedry against Cullen Larrabee. Jack Jedry is thrown out. Lucas Kamara battling. Puts slides right down there on Braden Bennett. Behind the net, they battle for the puck. Larrabee throws it out in front. Now he has it again. Larrabee bouncing puck in the slot. They're hammering away at it. They can't get a shot off. That goes back to the high slot. How about the flip right over the top of the net? There's a shot that is blocked off the stick of Charlie Camisa. Wow, heavy action. Kai Andre throws it out in front. Rich shot through. Oh, what a great stop by the goaltender. Braden Bennett from Point Blake range. And remember, this is second line at Dartmouth against first line of Stang, and they're taking it to him. Wow, Braden Bennett, he's shaking his head as he's taking his glove off and putting it back on. He realizes that, that was a big save at this point in the game. His team's ahead 1-0, 10.42 to go here in the second. Yeah, and Dartmouth's putting the pressure on, and none better than that, and the puck ended up deflecting up toward us. Aiden Cruz for the Indians, trying to get possession of the puck. J.C. Freights down behind the net. Damian Medeiros plays it back to the point. Medeiros gets the pass back from Nelson. Damian Medeiros, wrist shot through. It hit J.C. Freights in front of the net. And the puck is flipped out by Stang. So now they switch it up. Now it's Stang's second line against Dotman's first line. Yeah, man, it's taken down, and the fans wanted a call. Not going to get it. Seamus Marshall on the left side. Now breaking out is Adam Simmons. Aiden Simmons, excuse me. Aiden goes behind the net. Takes a hit from Josh Nelson. Around to the other side it goes. And the Indians coming out. Here's J.C. Freights. Plays it down in the corner. Here's Damian Medeiros. Damian Medeiros trying to control the puck. Plays it down. Stopped in the high slot. Kept it in, though. Plays it down around the corner. Aiden Cruz couldn't control. And now a pass. Wing to wing. Here's Tyler Beck. Stopped. Taken here by the Indians. Down behind the net. Around the corner. Plays it out in front. Oh, it hopped over. And now the Bishop Stang Spartans tried to break out. Eden Simmons tried to get out, but he couldn't. One of the things Dartmouth's looking to do is they're trying to get Martin involved from the point a lot now, Paul. Ikella into the corner. Trying to establish position. Now it goes back to the point. 
Bouncing puck through a screen, wide of the net. Stang looks like they need to change up, and now we have a whistle down low. Yeah, delayed offsides. Okay. We have a faceoff with 9-11 to go in the second. Now, we're talking about the physicality. A lot of times it starts to, you know, slow down a little bit in the second, but not this game. It is picked up and has continued from what we had in the first period. Yeah, it sure has, and, and it's favorite Dartmouth right now. Stang's got to, you know... They got to sit back and say, hey, whoa, you know, we got to do the same thing here and get back to our kind of game. Devin Beck plays it down deep for the Indians. Who can if? Up on the wing. Evan Moniz for Dartmouth. Tries to dig it out. Comes out of the corner with it. Throws around to the other side. Indians trying to set up to get the puck out, and they do. A long pass goes right by everybody. No icing as it was deflected. Evan Moniz throws it out in front. Moniz. And to get to the high slot. Plays it back to the point. Shot through. Blocked in front. Good defense there by the Indians. Stopping the shot by Luke Caniff. And it is iced. Yeah, and, and you can see Stang really reeling right now. As the puck got behind. Again, they're chasing instead of finding and picking up a man in the slot. And pretty soon, Dartmouth's going to take advantage of that and put one home. So they got to make sure they pick someone up in the slot. Well, we have a faceoff to the right of Braden Bennett. 6'1", 180 pounds out of New Bedford. And he is a senior, and the puck is collected here by Seamus Marshall. Now, yeah, Coach Capella called these two guys the best two goalies in the area uh, with Bennett and uh, the other one from Stang as well. So they got two good ones. They have Machado and Bennett, and you know, they've done a great job so far. Here's Seamus Marshall. Banks it up on the wing. Stopped here at center ice. Collected by Dartmouth. This is Cullen Larrabee. Larrabee gets hit as he tries to get by Seamus Marshall. Seamus Marshall establishing position. Colin Larrabee there. Now it's collected by Dartmouth. Here's Reed Martin. Martin down low. Shot saved by Bennett. Rebound. Trying to get a loose puck over here. Charlie Camisa couldn't get it. Now a chance here for Jack Jedry picking up Gavea. Shot by Jedry. Saved that time by Machado. Now in the corner, Stang throws it out in front. Go there with a shot. Great save by Machado. And now a great stop. Diving across Luke Caniff along with Machado, the goalie, and they keep the puck out. Uh, you, you sit back and say, boy, I wish I had that one back. And Jedry could sit back and say, yes, I wish I did. And he could have sniped that one home. But there's the save from Machado. Wow. And did he get across fast. Oh, I thought for sure that was going in the back of the net. Big rebound, a yawning net. And then a player diving across. And Machado and the defenseman keep it out. 7.30 to go here in the second period. Long pass through the neutral zone. Dartmouth trying to catch up to it. That was J.C. Freights. Picked up here by Seamus Marshall. Here he comes. Makes a move on J.C. Freights. There's Marshall. Going to the net. Shot saved by Machado. That was an end-to-end -end rush. It was, and with the other defense, though, you got to pick them up earlier than that, Paul. You can't let them back up on your goalie if you're a defenseman. you got to pick them up early and take them out. Jack Jedry plays it down deep. Josh Nelson around the horn, on the wing, trying to get it out. J.C. Freights collects. Now Damian Medeiros, two on two. Damian Medeiros goes to the Ooh. middle. Medeiros with a shot, saved by Bennett. Oh, Damian took a shot from a great location. Right between the two face-off circles. Back to the point. There's Jedry. J.C. Freights, excuse me, and a save that time by Braden Bennett. Wow. Comes Heavy down, action. Comes down the left side, Paul. Moves to the middle. Gets bumped. Keeps his balance. Keeps coming over the middle to slot. Pinpoint. Had it right where he wanted it. Just couldn't finish it. You know, when he came across, he tried to shoot the puck back where he yes. came from. Which, you know, but hey. Braden Bennett's not going to fall for that one. There's a shot through, tipped out in front by Evan Meniz. He got a redirect. Now in the corner. Here's Maddox Carrero. Taken away. Here comes Aiden Cousineau. Number 14 for Stang. Goes back. Luke Caniff collects for the Indians. Ooh. Indians can't get it out. A man is knocked down right in, on along the boards there. That was... Number eight, James Carrier, right wing corner now. Indians fight to keep it in. A lot of players down there in the right wing corner. Indians manage to move it out. There's Carrier. Slides it down. Comes out. Bennett decides to play it and keep it moving. Indians change up. They have a chance. Here's Reed Martin. Martin can't get the shot off. 
Kelly Camisa throws it out in front. And Evan Moniz couldn't get it. And now here comes Aiden Simmons. Too far ahead. Luke Caniff. Puck is taken away by Bishop Stang. And this is the Spartans moving it up. Until the offensive end. That's Noah Grigson. Grigson gets it back to the point. Try to play it across. Beck, Devin Beck. Behind the net. Coming down to the five-minute mark here in period number two. Staying hanging on to that one-nothing lead. The goal was scored way back. 2.49 to go in the first period. Feels like a long time ago. It does, and sometimes that's all it takes to win the game and, and come away with a one-nothing win. But, uh, you know, Diamond's kind of dictated more of the play here in the second period. If you coach Corvair, I'm sure you're not happy at what you're seeing. Diamond's winning a lot of the loose puck battles and uh, taking it away from staying. And they got to battle a little bit harder. See Coach Govier and Coach Capello. A lot of experience behind the benches here. Dartmouth and Stang. Puck goes across. One timer and a save that time by Machado. The Indians love, excuse me, the Spartans love to do that. Quinn Pine, they like to do it on the power play, but they set it up here even though it's five on five. That one timer, get the goalie moving. And Machado is equal to the task. There's a pass that's too far ahead. Oh, loose puck. Bennett couldn't hang on to it. Jack Jedry almost had a chance. Now back the other way, Govea. Govea centers it across, broken up by Jack Jedry. Here's Jedry, 4.25 to go in the second period. Play picking up. Damian Medeiros goes into the corner. Damian gets drilled that time by Quinn Pine. Back to the point it goes. Here's a blast through a screen. That goes wider than that. Goes all the way across. Puck is played down here by Dartmouth. That's Will Gibson. Gibson gets the puck along the right wing corner. Plays it down deep. Looking for J.C. Freights. Freights. Oh, he played it out in front. Looking for number eight. That was James Sharrier coming off the bench. Almost yep. had him. He was coming off the bench, and he was steaming right into to the place where he should have been. Just missed it. Long pass. James Sharrier goes down to get it. Back to the point. Stopped here by Stang. Long pass. Intercepted by the Indians. At center ice. 3.42 to go in the second period. Reed Martin. Flips it down deep. Goes behind the net. Braden Bennett lets it go all the way around. Goes all the way around. Eli Ikella couldn't get it. Reed Martin now. Almost stolen. Here comes Dartmouth. Two on two. Shot through. Saved by Bennett. He kicked it right out. That was a shot that time by Kyle Cousineau. And now the puck goes out of play. See, Paul, when you have the blue line and you have the top of the face-off circle, that's when you're supposed to pick the man up. If you go over and back yourself into almost the face-off dot, you're going too far, and it gives him an open shot, which he did there. Defense has to pick the man up between the blue line and the top of the circle. That shot was taken by James Sharrier, and making the save was Braden Bennett. This game is really entertaining to watch. 3.13 to go now in the second. Face-off here to the left of Bennett. Staying, looking to move it out. Dartmouth putting the pressure on. Trying to protect the puck. That's Nelson. Puts his body in front of the puck. All the way around. The Indians play it down deep. That was Larrabee. Now back at the point. Puck goes high in the air. Still hasn't gone out of the zone. Indians, no, it is out of the zone. It's a delayed offside. We have a penalty coming up. Not a penalty, excuse me, a faceoff coming up. Yeah, touched by Andre for Dartmouth. And it'll be outside of the staying zone. Well, thank you for watching here today, not only on Dartmouth Community Television here in the town of Dartmouth, but also on Dartmouth Community Media YouTube channel. We understand we have a lot of family members, Florida, we have one in St. Louis, and got people watching on the YouTube channel, so we're very happy to do that because back in the day, we couldn't do that. We couldn't have grandparents mm -hmm. watching the game, so that's a nice thing to be able to do. Late change by Coach Capello to get his first line out there against Stang's second. All right, a little gamesmanship here mm -hmm. as the puck goes behind the net. Nope, it's on the wing. There's a wrist shot through. Save that time by Machado. Collected by Gibson. Stopped by Stang. That's Aiden Simmons. Around the right side. Dartmouth plays it out. Stopped. Kept in by Bishop Stang. Going back to get it right now is Luke Caniff. Luke Caniff can't get it. Puck is near the net. Bishop Stang tried to get it into the slot area. Nice pass. Here's Damian Medeiros. Medeiros with a shot. Saved by Bennett. 
Remember, Paul, he's a right-hander. You've got to realize he wants to come to his strong side. He's going to cut across your body. You can't let him cut across. Unfortunately, Marshall did, and he got a good shot off. Well, you know, the interesting thing is you look at that and you think, wow, what a dangerous play that is. But Bennett played it perfectly. You know, he didn't get yep. excited. He was a big guy. He came out of the net a little bit. And really, Medeiros, he, he was trying to figure out what to do. There wasn't really anything that he left him to do. So a great job there by Bennett. Now it's center ice. The Indians try to keep it in. 2.04 to go in the second period. Now it's Justin Gover behind his line mate, Quinn Pine. Gover tries to poke it ahead. Indians come back the other way. That's Josh Nelson. There's a wrist shot through. That is going to be blocked by Seamus Marshall. Goes out of play, and we have a faceoff with 1.49 left. Well, it's starting to look like a chess match over here. Yeah, and with 149, you're looking for that last push as a quick line shift for Dartmouth brings the number one line right back on the ice for Coach Capello. Jack Jedry taking the draw for Dartmouth. Excuse me for staying, and that was Aiden Cruz for Dartmouth. In front! Oh, what a stop by Bennett on Damian Medeiros. Oh, he just robbed him yeah. right in front of the net. He's right on the doorstep. You can't ask for anything better than that. Back in the way, they score! Now, no, they don't. They're going to wipe it off. I think he's going to say the net move. The oh. mask came off Machado. Wow. They, they were all celebrating down there, but I guess that was premature. I think that was number 22 of Bishop staying. He thought it went in. Yeah, went ben, Benny Govea wants to know what's going on with this one because he, he thinks it was a goal. And he, he's... Uh, not happy. No, he's not. And he's reaching out to the ref right now and say, hey, I, I need a moment of your time there, pal. Which he has the right to ask yep. for an explanation, you know. Unfortunately, it wasn't down here with his net right below us. I don't know if we got the camera to see that one, but he's going to talk to the official right now and say, hey, what's going on here? Yeah, the players seem to think it went in, but of course, they're rooting for it to go in, and sometimes, you know, they think it went in, but it didn't. Quinn Pine, number 22, it looks like he was, you see him there in the middle of the, the area there, and he, he thought it went in, but it didn't. So 133 to go. Here we go. Face off. <coughs> Seamus Marshall plays it all the way around. Collected here by Quinn Pine. Now there's a penalty following. coming up. It's going to be on Stang. Well, the Indians have a power play with 1.23 to go in the second period. Now he's going to get called for the penalty for one. Two, he's lucky he get called for more because when you make a hit and you leave and you taunt someone, you might get another penalty. So he's like he's only getting two minutes. It could be four. So Quinn Pine is in the penalty box. I believe it was a roughing. But he's there for two minutes, and there's 123 to go. And now a great opportunity for the Dartmouth Indians. They got all their big guns out there. There's the faceoff, and Jack Jedry clears it down. Reed Martin going back to get there. He's got Damian Medeiros, J.C. Freights, Josh Nelson. Oh, it's stolen by Stang. Rich shot. Oh, it almost went in. Another shot. Oh, man. Two great golden chances by Aiden Simmons. Short-handed. Wow, that would have been really big if they could put that one in. One minute to go in the second now period. Now stop and set it up. There you go. That's how you play hockey. Back door. Reed Martin tried to get it down to Damian Medeiros, but it was picked off by Seamus Marshall. So Stang with a chance. Broken up by Reed Martin. J.C. Freight's on the boards. Now it's collected here by Aiden Cruz. Cruz down to Damian Medeiros. Medeiros with a shot. Glove save by Bennett. And Bennett was looking behind him, but the puck was in front of him, and he makes the stop. Squeaked through out of the glove, went in between his pads, sat on it, and they blow the whistle with 36.5 remaining here in the second period. This one's been a fast period, Paul. This, is, wow. this one's been moving quick. Not a lot of whistles. I think we're looking at a hot goalie here. Hmm. Face off, Govea. Indians keep it in. Now it's Damian Medeiros. Shot blocked by Seamus Marshall. Loose puck. They play it back to the high slot. Reed Martin down to Damian Medeiros. All the way across. Oh, a nice pass back that time by one of the Indians. And now a bouncing puck. They still can't get it in. Name Sherry, that was Josh Nelson right in front of the net. Yeah, and now a chance here because Machado. Oh, he came out and got the puck away from Govea. Now he throws it in front, and Machado makes the stop. Wow. 
Well, unfortunately for Dartmouth, the puck stayed on edge ball. That was the problem. And neither Nelson or Medeiros could settle it down to send it home and finish it away. Oh. And unfortunately for them, they're not going to get uh, a goal here. They'll still have 37 seconds left with power play starting the third period. So at the end of two periods, it is Bishop staying one and Dartmouth nothing. Just a quick reminder, Chris Santos and I, Paul Santos, we do a podcast called Santos on Sports on a Facebook page. We did have some difficulties with one of the pages, but we're back on and we're up and running. And we're going to be on tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And, oh, man, we're not going to talk about it here. That Patriots game, oh, that, that defense, man, they couldn't stop anything. We're going, to, <laughs> we're going to complain a little bit about that defense and we're going to talk a little bit. So we'll have some fun. That's tomorrow at 4 o'clock on New Bedford Guide and on the Paul Santos Live Facebook page and YouTube channel. And Chris has a lot of fun to talk to because you are very knowledgeable, I have to say. You're Thanks, very Paul. knowledgeable, very knowledgeable. And um, when people start commenting and, and you, you have your uh, perspective, I really yep. enjoy hearing your perspective, you know. Well, I mean, you know, you, you're given the great topics and, and you've come up with some <laughs> real things to talk about, <laughs> about the New England Patriots. And yeah. not many people can, you know, analyze the game as much as you know. Uh, and then we just try to uh, put it on top, say some comments on it. Hopefully some people chime in, get their thoughts, and then we figure out between all of us, you know, what, what's the direction the Patriots are going in. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. We do yeah. have a few regulars that chime in and talk to us, so we really enjoy it. That's Santos on Sports tomorrow at 4 on New Bedford Guide and the Paul Santos Live Facebook page and YouTube channel. All right, it is one to nothing staying here at the Headland at the end of two, third period action coming up next here on Dartmouth Community Media. into the period 249 Jack Jedry getting that one goal and that is all the scoring we've had the goaltenders have been excellent yeah they sure have and it's been an exciting second period if you're an Indian fan they've had a lot more domination uh, in the staying zone they just got to find a way to finish their chances they have 37 seconds left on a power play maybe they can get something going real quick sneak one in early catch staying down uh, and then after that it's back to five on five but if you coach Capello, you gotta like the way the Indians played, Paul. It's just a matter of now, when you get your opportunities, send it home and get back uh, scoring some goals. Because right now, they, they've had the advantage in that second period. We understand that if the game goes into overtime, which it could, it's one to nothing right now. We understand that there was a five minute overtime followed by a shootout. And the reason why is because this is a tournament. Yep. And you can't end the game in a tie with a tournament. Somebody's gonna win the tournament. The championship game is tomorrow. So five minutes and then shootout, that would be exciting, but let's see if somebody can win the game right here in the third period. Yeah, when I was coaching Paul, we were the ones that used to have the hockey uh, tournament, uh, the holiday one yes. at New Bedford High. We played Volk, Dartmouth played Stang, and then the winners and losers would play each other. That's what it was when I was coaching, and that's how our format was, same thing here. Let's see what happens as we start the third period. All right, the puck goes down into the Dartmouth Indian end, 33 seconds left on the power play. Here is J.C. Freights. Picking up Damian Medeiros. Puck goes past him and into the Bishop staying zone, and they throw it right back down. But J.C. Freights gets it, backhands it, tries to send one of his teammates to the circle. Shot high and wide of the net by Aiden Cruz. And the puck is out into the Dartmouth end. Good chance there for Dartmouth. Down to 10 seconds to go. They miss Medeiros on the first pass. See if they go back to him. They it try. Is, it is Medeiros taking the pass from behind the net. Medeiros. Oh, the play is offside as J.C. Freights was flying in from the left side. Only three seconds left now on the power play. So here we go. Let's see what happens. The physicality never really slowed down in the second period. It even went up a notch, I thought. Now we got something thrown on the ice by the fans. So Great crowd here tonight. Fans filling up the benches on both sides of the penalty box on the other side as the puck slides in on Dartmouth goalie. The shadow gets it up to J.C. Freights. Freights into the neutral zone. 
stops. Tries to set back up again. Gives it to Reed Martin. Martin just banks it in. Seamus Marshall gets it at the circle. 14 minutes to go in the third. Staying clinging to this 1-0 lead from the first period. Here's Damian Medeiros. Damian spins. Nice to get it down low, but a chance here for Bishop Stang. Here's Jack Jedry out in front. Too far ahead of Govea. And Govea takes a hit from Josh Nelson. On the other side, the Indians. They still have it. They bring it out. They see Freights. Wheels through the neutral zone. Freights into the offensive end. Cuts to the net. In front. Goes behind the net. Throws it out in front. Nelson couldn't get it. Nelson goes down deep. Charles Camisa. They stop it at the point. Govea hits his man. There's a shot through a screen. Blocked in front. And skated away now by Justin Govea. Indians winding up in their own end. 13-18 to go in the third period. Indians not scoring a goal, but carrying the play at least for the moment. Here comes Bishop Stang. Seamus Marshall, one of the captains. He's being chased. Throws it out in front. He's bothered all the way by Luke Haniff. How pass to Kai Andrade. He's in alone. Andrade. Oh, a stop by Bennett. How did he stop it? He stopped it, and Masha goes crashing into the net, so the whistle will blow. Whoa. But now, I don't know if that one got and hit the post and came off. It was tough to see. We're on the opposite end, but left hand went to his backhand, tried to finish it, and Bennett makes the save. Wow, the Indians really putting the pressure on. Just amazing how they carry the puck right into the Bishop staying in, really not bothered. And got a shot from point blank range. Brian Rose is not happy about something. He's up uh, on the box, wants to talk to the official and ask him what happened there. Well, the officials are calling a face off to the left of Bennett. Cullen Larrabee up there with Charlie Camisa. And Reed Martin, here's the face off. Stopped here by Bishop Stang. They go into the corner to get it. And it hops over the stick at the point by Luke Caniff. And it's all the way down on Machado. Reed Martin winds up. Four check. Right there by Aiden Simmons. Spinning away right there is Luke Caniff. Into the offensive end goes Charles Camisa. Camisa with a shot. Blocked in front. Goes behind the net. Chance for the Indians. They play it back to the point. Here's Reed Martin. Wrist shot through. Changes direction. Never makes it to the net. Indians behind the net, looking to throw it out in front. Backhand a weak, though. Staying looking to move it out in the opposite direction. Heavy action right here, just inside the blue line. Yeah, I, don't li I would have liked to see him of spin around and get on his forehand instead of taking the backhand. Reed Martin has spilled that time. Got to play it down from Stang. Looks like number 18, Aiden, Aiden Simmons. Simmons. Yeah. Yep. Notice Paul starting this period, not as physical, and yet not as much of the fast play that we saw in the second period. Again, it's one nothing. You don't want to take a cheap penalty and then give up a cheap goal, and you don't want to make a bad pass and get a turnover. So things settling down a little bit more here in this third. Well, whatever happened there, the officials let it go. We didn't call anything. So we have a face off to the left of Bennett. 12.03 to go in the hockey game. A great game here between Dartmouth and Stang. Maddox Carrero taking the draw now for Dartmouth. Puck goes behind the net. Seamus Marshall. Long pass. Couldn't hook up with Govea. Back the other way goes Josh Nelson. Nelson leaves it for Damian Medeiros. Now out in front. Oh, they couldn't get the wrist shot off. That was number 23, Maddox Carrero. Back the other way comes Stang. Govea throws it in front. Score! Maddox Carrero, no, it's... Quinn Pine going to finish yes, it Quinn off. Yes, Quinn Pine, excuse me, and it's 2 nothing staying. Oh, boy, that's a big one. Yeah, it is because they did the right thing. They pushed them way out to the side, got them along the boards, but nobody picked up Pine in front to really box him out. Standing on the doorstep, they move it across. Machado inside the goal. He finishes it, gets over his shoulder. Big goal right there from staying to take a 2 nothing lead. So Quinn Pine with 11.43 to go in the third period makes it 2 to nothing. Bishop Stang. And that is a huge goal. As the Indians are cutting the pressure on and putting it on a little bit. Stang trying to get back into the game. Now they need two goals. And it's 11 minutes left in the game. Reed Martin 
Keeps it down deep. Justin Govea. Long pass up ahead. Pine. <clears throat> Pine with a wrist shot. Saved by Machado. He's having a little trouble with those rebounds. But he manages to cover that one up. Yeah, he corralled that when he came way out. Cut the angle down. It was what's he supposed to do. And then again, keep and corral the rebound. And he does it. Paul, if you're Dartmouth, you've got to find a way to score and score as early as possible to get the momentum back on your side. The later it is, the more tougher it is. Thing loses the puck out to center ice. Puck is flipped up onto the Dartmouth bench, and we'll have a faceoff coming up. Well, the Indians are putting the pressure on, but Bishop Stang is keeping the puck out of the net. Face off here in the neutral zone. It goes down into the Bishop staying in. Aiden Simmons plays it up on the wing. The last through by Dartmouth. That was Nick Anderson. Oh, Josh Nelson. He just drops. Number 28, Tyler Beck. Damien Medeiros tries to keep the puck in the staying end. Minions working hard but tiring trying to get that puck. Down into the staying in, and here's Nelson. <clears throat> Long pass. Amy Medeiros to the offensive end. Medeiros goes for the shot. Blocked. Backhander through. It goes right through the goal crease. Now in front. Reed Martin couldn't get it. Now back at the right point. Reese shot through. Blocked in front. Another Reese shot through. Blocked in front, and a big check. Oh, they're going to call a penalty. Aiden Simmons just lays out the Dartmouth player. They're going to call a penalty on that. I think it was on Aiden Cousineau. Oh, wait a minute, number 18. That is Aiden Simmons going to the penalty box. This is a big, big opportunity for Dartmouth. It almost feels like a must-goal situation. Well, with 10-19, down two. Remember, they're not down one. You're down two. This is kind of a big one for the Indians. they got to find a way to get one by Bennett, who's been stellar here tonight. You got Freights, Martin, Medeiros. Yeah, and I Colin figured, Larry. Yeah, I figured this would be a good time to call timeout, and I and I'm right. Capello's going to call one here. Yep. Because he knows he's got to be fresh and go after this one to try to get one to cut this in half. Yeah, excellent timeout, Machado, taking some strides over to the bench, and the Indians are going to regroup. They got a two-minute penalty coming up. They need to have their top line out there, and they need a goal. So when you need a goal, you're going to put your guns out there. You got a power play. And if you can get the goal, make it 2-1, to one, you get back into the game. That goal, that second one, that is really, really tough to bounce back from if you're Dartmouth because it was a one-goal game most of the game, but then that second one, that was a killer. Quinn Pine, first goal by Jack Jedry. So both teams taking a rest. You see Coach Capello, assisted by Brian Rose and Mr. Martin. And then on the right there, you have Kenny Govier at the glasses, along with Frank Gomes on the right, and that's Paul Brussels on the left. And then Ryan Govier, terrific player himself, played for Dartmouth a few years ago. He's there too. So, yeah, they're regrouping. This is this next two minutes. This is going to be very important. Yeah, um, this is why this timeout is a little bit longer, and I think you got to get your top group. Obviously, you're going to see uh, Madaris. You're going to see Martin out there. Nelson's out there. You got Larrabee out there. Finish up with Freights at the top. So, big time for the Indians right now to try to score. Colin Larrabee takes the face off, loses it down to Jedry. Jedry blasts it around. Stopped at the point. Nice play that time by J.C. Freights. But now it bounces down to Bishop Stangs. A lot of time coming off the clock. As the Spartans toss it back down. Damien Medeiros with the puck right now. Indians need a goal. 2-0 Bishop staying. Ten minutes ago in the third period. Long pass ahead goes right by everybody. That was just too hard. It's going to be icing against Dartmouth. Yeah. 136 to go on the penalty. Unfortunately, it was fast. Staying doing a good job getting the puck out of their end. And they killed off a good almost 30 seconds. 24 anyway, 136 to go in the game. 2-0 Bishop Stang. Face off to the right of Machado, sophomore goaltender. Cullen Larrabee, a senior. Reed Martin goes behind the net, picks up some speed. 
Martin flies down the wing. Martin throws it out in front. That was Damian Medeiros. Medeiros with a shot. That goes wide of the net. Puck plays all the way across. Here's Medeiros. Medeiros with a shot. Save that time by Bennett. Damian Medeiros bounces it down. Loose puck in the slot. There's a shot. Saved by Bennett off the stick of Nelson. Now in the corner. Played around there by number 22. That's Quinn Pine. Stolen. Here's Medeiros. Oh, another stop by Bennett. He got a good look at it. And he robs Damian Medeiros. What goaltending. And if you're staying, when you get the puck off a rebound, you can't clear it up the middle. You've got to clear it toward the boards. If you do, they're going to be waiting for you. And Medeiros was there to wait, and he snapped one. Braden Bennett doing an outstanding job in net. 6'1", 180 pounds out of New Bedford. Puck loose in the slot. Collected here by Dartmouth. Excuse me, staying. Fired all the way down by Govea. All right, behind the net. Here comes Reed Martin. 45 seconds left on the power play. Long pass up ahead. They're going to call icing again. Is yeah. It doesn't look like Cullen Larrabee got a stick on it. Indians can't get organized here. 41 seconds on this power play. This unit had their chances. Still trying to finish. Time is evaporating here. Eli Eichela against Cullen Larrabee. Goes around. Josh Nelson. Plays it down into the corner. Nelson goes behind the net. Tries to get possession. Again, it goes behind the net. Larrabee. Larrabee tried to throw it out in front. Stolen. Damian Medeiros. Oh. It went right across the crease. Oh, and a great chance from Freights, but he couldn't put it home. Now here comes Freights behind the net. Out in front. Loose puck. It just can't get the shot off. And the puck is cleared out by Stang, and that is going to wind the penalty down. Only a few seconds left. Well, you got to remember, when you're a big goalie and you go down in that butterfly, you got to get up over them. they got to find a way to get it up and over the pads. No icing as Cullen Larrabee goes deep into the Stang end, trying to keep possession down there, and now well, we have a penalty. a penalty. Looks like the Indians will be shorthanded. Kai Andre, the sophomore forward, is on his way to the penalty box. I didn't see what the call was. Yeah, he went behind the net. He made a check, and when the opponent tried to get away from it, unfortunately, he tripped him, and that's what they're going to call. Now it's really tough. you got Dartmouth trailing 2 nothing, and they're shorthanded. Yep. Not where you want to be. Not where you want to be, and staying is, I don't know, they move the puck pretty well on that power play. That, that puck goes hard back and forth, back and forth. Of course, the Indians will be looking to sneak out for a shorthand. And now we have a timeout. This one taken by Coach Govea. Yeah. 8.09 left. Well, remember, when it was 5-on-4 the opposite way, you got spending a lot of energy trying to get that puck out of the zone. Now we reverse it. You're going to be on the power play. I want fuel for my guys. I want my fresh five. I want to make sure they're ready to go. Maybe we can put one home here, go up 3 nothing, and put this one away. So I understand the timeout to reserve because you were just uh, trying to kill uh, a power play. And, of course, if Stain can put one in here, it almost finishes Dartmouth off. You know, Dartmouth's got to kill it and then try to get one in the next, you know, six minutes after the penalty's over. And that's not easy. This is Coach Govea, yep. along with Ryan to his left and Frank Gomes to his right. So he's explaining what he wants from his team. Don't make any mistakes. Be smart. Well, it's that. And, you know, obviously they're in the power play. Don't take a cheap penalty, number one. Number two. They are very good when they set up their umbrella format and they get their power play when they want it. So I'm looking on this face-off here to get something and then set up, get in position where you want, move the puck around, find the open man, and see if they can finish. Their power play is very, very good. He works on that. I've seen that before the mm -hmm. last couple of years. If you have the players to do it, he does a lot of those one-timers back and forth from the circle to the circle. The goalie is moving all the time. And, you know, if the goalie is moving back and forth, you've got much more... Better chance of putting it home. Well, it's usually one guy in the middle, two on the sides, two down below. They get in front of Machado, try to finish their chances. Here's the faceoff. Indians trying to flip it out. Damian Madaris. That's knocked down. He has the puck right now. Get rid of it. Nobody is coming at him. Okay. And just to flip it out. Enough. KC Freights. Oh, he was thinking about a shorthanded opportunity, and now he's hooking the staying player, Marshall. 
And there's Reed Martin sliding it down, killing off about six, seven seconds. There's Damian Madera's got a hold of it out in front. Oh, it was intercepted by Stang. And here's Marshall through the neutral zone. Got a set up here. See? There's a shot wide of the net. Yeah, and, and that's what I'd, I'd rather have him just sit in the corner and relax. Set up your power play. Josh Nelson has it now. And he throws it down into the staying in. So he said you take a wide shot, a wicked shot, it goes all the way up. You have the layoff sides, and then they just ice it down. So this is Favorin's thing. they got to do a better job. Chip Stang has the puck in their own end. Pass across. Quinn Pine. Stop to the circle. Nice play there by Reed Martin. Short-handed opportunity. There's Martin. To the net. Shot. Saved by Bennett. Well, that was a good chance there by mm -hmm. Reed Martin. It wasn't dangerous. You've got to do it if you have the opportunity. He has it again. Goes behind the net. Bowden. Buzz and they score! The puck was loose, and it looks like it was banged in by Cullen Larrabee. It's 2-1. to one. Well, a very, very tired defense for Stang. You saw Marshall go down, try to put his body in front. Instead, they flipped it over Marshall. It goes to Larrabee. Bennett goes down. They go over the shoulder. They put it in. A short-handed goal. Wow. If I was going to say they were going to give up one of them, Paul, I said, no way. But Stang does, and Dartmouth is right back in this one with 6.45 to go. And there's 36 seconds left on the Bishop Stang power play. How about that? What a big short-handed goal. 6.42 left. Got some time to do something, but you got to get this penalty kill over. Kept in by Stang. There's a shot through. Saved by Machado. Has to kick the right pad. Settle it down because you can reserve some energy if you do. Oh, they tried to... Send it out in front. Machado goes down, tries to cover the lower part of the ice. Ryan Barrows. Now it's Noah Gregson. J.C. Freight's in the corner. They throw it out in front. There's a pass by Evan Meniz, but now the other way. Here comes Dartmouth. Who can if? Can if. Got that's through, and he was knocked that's down. A penalty. So the Indians are going on a power play again with six minutes left. Ryan Barrows in the box. Oh, wow. The pendulum is swinging the other way here. Third line forward. Does a little bit of a hook. Knocks the player down, which was number 14, Caniff. And Dartmouth right back in this with six minutes to go. Puck is loose. <laughs> Cleared out here by Stang. Once again, we have a great game. One goal, just like usual. Here comes Freights. Freights goes right down and into the Stang end. Freights goes behind the net. Likes to carry the puck around. Go. Throws it back in front. Set up, set up. 142 on the power play. Damian Medeiros. Which is with Martin. Throws it down to the left wing corner. Martin throws it in front. Kai Andre there, bouncing puck. Shot by... J.C. Freights is wide of the net. And the puck is cleared out by Stang. Wow. Armith needs this power play goal. 5.20 left. Stang has been ahead the whole night. Adaris drops it for J.C. Freights. Mm -hmm. Now across, Reed Martin. Martin shot high and wide. Bennett sliding back and forth in the crease. Shot is going across the crease, and Damian Madaris got the puck on the far side and threw it at the net. And now we have Cullen Larrabee getting into some action there. Him and Marshall, but Marshall was trying to back off. Larrabee was still coming after him. Paul, Stang, oh. Stang looks real tired right now. Uh, and they're reeling. They gotta finally get some fresh legs on there. They're, they're struggling. Indians trying to tie it up. 5.05 left, 105 on the power play. Back to the point, Reed Martin. Now across Freights. Freights, one timer by Madaris, and it goes wide of the net. Freights goes down deep. Freights in front. Oh, Damian Medeiros is going to take a shot from the other circle. Here's Freights. Goes to the cross. Hits a skate. Medeiros! Oh, the shot goes wide. Oh, Medeiros just walked in and blasted one. Now he's looking like a Ovechkin out there right now on that left side. Yeah. Just waiting for the puck, and they're trying to find them, setting them up at every advantage. Medeiros stopped it. Here's Reed Martin. All the way across. Medeiros. Puck hops over his stick. 
Down low, J.C. Freights. 25 seconds left on the power play. They switch off. There's a shot wide of the net. Goes all the way around. Reed Martin. 18 seconds left on the power play. Down to the circle. Back That's goal. out in front. Oh, and the shot goes wide as Charles Camiso is headed to the net. They try to throw it out in front and staying yeah, banks it out. They need to change badly. Oh, the power play's over. Finally going to get everybody to come off. All right, the power play is over. No icing. Four minutes left in the game. Here comes Stang. Stopped by Josh Nelson. Down deep. Collected here by Devin Beck. And knocked down in the corner. Beck comes around to the near side. Quinn Pine is there, and we have a whistle. The man is hurt in the corner. I don't know if they're going to call a penalty. No, he just didn't get up. It was Larrabee down there. Getting on number 24, Devin Beck. So he went down, he'll come off. And with 3.42 remaining, got to expect maybe, Paul, good opportunity. Machado will get pulled at some point. Get your best six out there when you need it. Probably with uh, under a minute. Colin Larrabee to take the face off. He threw it right at the net. Covered up by Bennett. Oh, he just kind of poked it right at the net. 3.39 left. There is really one of the stars of the game, Braden Bennett. 6-1 goaltender, 180 pounds, and he has kept everything out of the net so far. Good pass. Should, oh, what a long wing-to-wing -wing pass. There's a shot through. High in the air, Govea behind the net. Govea behind the net, still battling for the puck. There's a shot off the side of the net. Quinn Pine is there. Oh, a great opportunity for Stang. Govea bothering Cullen Larrabee. Now it's along the side, kept in here by Stang. Now it's collected by Armuth. Here comes Cullen Larrabee. Into the slot, slides in on Bennett. Saved by Bennett with 3.01 left. Wow, what a great game. Yeah, trying to go through the two defensemen. Again, they keep collapsing on Bennett. And if you're gonna do that, you just gotta take the man out, let the puck go. Puck would slide right to Bennett while the other defenseman takes the puck and does something with it. But with three minutes to go, Dartmouth keeps the pressure on. Back with the first line, Martin on the center. Reed Martin gets it back. Josh Nelson, senior co-captain, plays it down. Seamus Marshall all the way around. Here comes Stang, an opportunity down the wing. Oh, a nice job moving ahead and taking the puck. That's Luke Caniff. Dangerous pass right out in front. Stopped by Martin, saved by Machado. And now here comes Martin the other way. Martin into the high slot. Shot. Oh, a save by Bennett. Now it's Josh Nelson, right wing corner, taken away by Stang. Two and a half to go. Heavy action back and forth. It's pretty much almost like having four forwards in one D because Martin really playing up there with the, uh, with the number one line. Aiden Simmons behind the net, forcing the play with Luke Caniff. Back at the point, they play it down. Very important seconds ticking off the clock. 2.08 to go. Here comes Medeiros. Medeiros takes the hit. I tell you, Danny Medeiros, he's carried the puck a lot tonight. Two minutes to go. Josh Nelson slides it down. Damian Medeiros down deep at the right wing corner against Seamus Marshall. The Indians come out with it. And now it's staying. Wing to wing pass. Machado is still in the net. 147 left. Here's staying all the way across. Intercepted. That was Nick Anderson. Clear it out again. Very important time going down the tubes. This is a spinorama. Reed Martin out in front. Loose puck. There's nobody there to shoot it with uh, a minute and a half. Unfortunately, oh. everyone's tired and they went off the ice. Here's another chance. High slot. Loose puck. There's a shot by Ooh. Nelson. Oh, I don't know how you missed that one. They're taking chances. Nick Anderson slides it down. 115 left. They got to think about getting Machado out of there. Yeah, probably with under a minute, they want to get the guys that they want out there. Dartmouth's first line is on the bench because they were tired from that long shift they just had. Don't they, know if they can get back. Taken away by Stang. Loose puck. Less than a minute to go in the game. Josh Nelson can't get a hold of it. Delivers a big hit on Matt Burt. 50 seconds left. Oh, Josh Nelson just got hammered to the left of his goaltender. 45 seconds left. 
Indians trying to break out. Cullen Larrabee, long wing to wing, intercepted. And they fire it in. 35 seconds yeah, left. They got to pull Machado, but the puck's got to get in the zone of staying. They got to pull him now. Here he goes. Open net. Reed Martin. Reed Martin gets knocked down. Call penalty, penalty, penalty coming up. One. Oh, a penalty coming up on Stang. Sure is. And with 22.5, Dartmouth will have six on four. The question is, is that enough time? I mean, 22 seconds, not a lot of time. But they got six people out there with the empty net. You got your best players. They have to win the faceoff and get possession. And then try to get a couple of shots on Braden Bennett, who's been sensational all night. Seamus Marshall is on her way to the penalty box. I'm not sure if it was roughing or tripping. But the thing is, because there's only 22 seconds left in the game, it's not the hardest kill in the world, you know. Right. But the Indians have the big guns out there. Let's see what they can do. 22.5. Face off Larrabee. Oh, oh the puck is out. Oh. They have an empty net. Yep. They score! Dustin Govea puts it away. You know, the funny part is, Dartmouth wins the draw. They got where they want. It split the 2D. And Martin tried to dive, and it deflected, and that was the end of it. Unfortunately, it was a great win of the draw. They couldn't do nothing with it. Well, it's been an entertaining game. You know, the last, what, five, seven, eight minutes. The Indians really turned it up a notch to try to win this game. I mean, down two to nothing. And so this was really entertaining, you know, trying to watch the Indians come back, but they just couldn't get over the hump. No, and, and unfortunately for them, they're going to lose this one uh, with 14.2 seconds left. They had their chances, Paul, especially in that second period. They just could not find a way to get it in. And obviously here at the end, uh, tough loss for the Indians. They will move on to play Rochester. Stang will take on Foxborough. Looks like Liam Fogarty is in net for Dartmouth as time winds down. Bishop Stang comes into this game and defeats their arch rival Dartmouth 3 to 1. And look at the celebration down there in front of their fans. Yeah, all we can do is watch this one. This is a great rivalry, and every year. This is what you see. Whoever wins the game, they go down in front of their fans and they just whip it up and they they just love it. And now, you know, if you go way back, right, when Dylan was playing way back, they only played once. Then when my son Andrew played, then they started playing twice. And now they play twice all the time. I think it's great. I think it's great that they play twice. Yeah, so they're going to play at the end of the season? Correct. All right. And the Bishop Stang has their own tournament. So it's really great. You know, they get to come play again. And, you know, I think last year Dartmouth won one and then there was a tie. And now look at this. This is a good sportsmanship right here. Yep. As the players are putting their sticks down, and there's the goaltenders talking at center ice. Everybody knows everybody. Oh, yeah. Me and Medeiros and all yeah. these guys, they all know each other, you know. A lot of times, you know, these kids, they played on a team, and they went on a travel team, and they, they played with the guys on the other team. So when they're playing this game, it's really like, you know, you really want to beat them, but you're still friendly with them. You still, you know, have a great relationship with them. But... You really do want to beat them, you know? <laughs> well, you do, but at yeah. the same time, you realize, you know, you're all friends at the end. And yep. You can see on the ice all the guys hugging one another because they, they they know and they, they've played together. So, you know, an outstanding hockey game, Paul, either way. Obviously, one team has to lose, one has to win. And and Stan came up on top with that one there. They get a little bit better, uh, better of it. And I thought Bennett was pretty outstanding uh, on, on goaltending for uh, Bishop's thing. Yeah, he certainly was. And, you know, Ashton Machado wasn't bad. I mean, he made some saves, but that big rebound at the beginning, the goal by Jack Jedry in the first period, is one nothing for a long time. It was 2.49 of the first period, and there were no goals in the second. And then in the third period, Quinn Pine scored with 11.43 to go. That made it 2 nothing. And then Cullen Larrabee, short-handed goal with 6.45 to go, got the Dartmouth fans into a frenzy as they figured they were back in the game, and they were back in the game. And for that last 6.45, a one goal game, you can't beat that. No, you can't. And and both coaches will go back and, you know, take a look at this one and say, hey, what was positive, what was negative? You know, we're going to play each other again and we're going to find a way to uh, get uh, one more game in. We'll see each other again and work on, obviously, 
finishing your chances, you work on the physicality, you work on your power play, you work on your shorthand. You, you take a lot from this game. And both of them said, both coaches, this is a big game to tell us what kind of team we have because they were kind of similar. Didn't think they played that caliber so far going into this game. Well, they know now what they got. Both of these teams were undefeated coming into the game. And as we said, Jack Jedry got the goal for Bishop Stang. Quinn Pine made it 2-0 and then Cullen Larrabee with the shorthanded bowl to make it 2-1. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Chris Santos for filling in for my son Andrew Santos today, enjoying his commentary on hockey. He played hockey for New Bedford High School, or excuse me, Darwin High School, yep. and also coached at New Bedford High School, so right. very knowledgeable about the game. And of course, we got Santos on sports tomorrow at 4 mm -hmm. on New Bedford Guide and on the Paul Santos Live Facebook page and YouTube channel. So we got some stuff to talk about. You know, I'm still, I'm still a little annoyed. By that Patriots game. <laughs> I know it's I know it's already two days and tomorrow's gonna be three days, but you should have seen me on Monday. I was really, really fit to be tied. Well, you got a lot to talk about tomorrow. <laughs> and if you're watching out there, please join us and yes. at the same time maybe uh, chime in and give us your thoughts on what you think. Yeah, right, and your Dallas Cowboys, wow, they're doing pretty good, so we'll have to talk about that. He's smiling ear to ear with you know when we talk about those Dallas Cowboys. Oh yeah. How about them Cowboys? That's right. <laughs> All right, uh, the final score again, Bishop staying three and Dartmouth one for our entire staff here at Edlin Arena. Chris Santos, I'm Paul Santos. Happy holidays, and we'll talk to you again for more Dartmouth High School Hockey. Good night from the Edlin Arena.